Okay, today's objective is objective 160, and its students will be able to find the GCF of, a, of monomials and polynomials. So I'll give you a second, get that written down. Okay, if you don't have that down, make sure you hit pause so you can finish it, otherwise we will move on. Okay, let's review what a monomial is. Um, I want you guys to think about it right now. If you had to write what a monomial is, what would you say? Okay. Monomial is basically the product, so multiplication, right? Product of a number, and we can abbreviate number, a number and variables. Okay. Um, basically, it's just one term. Okay, when we think about terms, we've talked about terms a lot. It's just one term. Okay, an example of this would be something like four x y squared. Right, that's just one term. Okay. So let's move on and talk about. So, before in the objective, I said the GCF. We ought to know that the GCF actually means greatest common factor. So get this down in your notes, greatest common factor, and I'm just going to use the abbreviation GCF. You have to memorize that if you did not know that already. Okay, so let's break this down, because anytime we have these big phrases, we just need to use our common sense and break this down. So let's take each word, okay? The greatest Okay, well, we all know what greatest means. It's simply the, the biggest, and in our case, we're also going to think about it as the most, and we'll see why we're going to use the word most in this objective when we think about greatest. Okay, common. Well, what does common have? Okay, if we think about common like, oh, my friend and I have this in common, it means that we both kind of share it, or we could say that it's like shared by all is the, the definition we're going to use for this objective. Again, if we have something in common, it's like, oh, we both like basketball or we both love math. You know, we have that in common. And then lastly is the word factor. Okay? Factor. Factor is simply a number multiplied. Okay, so whenever you think about factor, you should be thinking multiplication. Factor is a number multiplied by another number. And let's add to get our target number. Okay, so if we think about, let's just use an example. If we think about the number 10, right? If we think about factors of 10, well, we could say 2 and 5 are both factors of 10 because we can multiply the number 2 by the number 5 to get to 10. So factors of 10 are 2 and 5. Okay. All right. Um, we definitely need to review, and this was from the very beginning of the year, um, what prime means. Okay, I want you guys to take a second in your head, think about what does prime mean? And think about prime factors. Okay, you should have thought about prime means that there are only two factors. Okay, and you guys remember the way that we wrote this. This is the easiest way because a lot of times you guys mix up prime and composite numbers. The easiest way to think about prime is to write it. And instead of the I, write a one really big. And then the me. So what's a prime number? It just has factors of one and me. So if we think about seven, the only factors of seven are one and me, the number itself, one and seven. Okay. Composite numbers are simply, it's, it has more then two factors. Okay, more than two factors. 
Now, the other thing that, um, and this is just review, but we have to remember this, the numbers 0 and 1. So numbers 0 and 1. Okay, Are they prime or are they composite? I want you thinking about that. Are they prime or composite? Okay, hopefully you didn't just let me trick you because 0 and 1 are neither. Okay, so if you ever see an answer that has 0 and 1 in it, it says, oh, these are all prime numbers, that's not the case because 0 and 1 are neither. This is a key point that you cannot forget. Okay, let's do a couple examples um, to get us kind of warmed up to today's objective. So if I say find the GCF of, uh, let's just do 12 and 28. Okay, now some of you right away could probably come up with the GCF in your head. But for numbers that aren't so easy, especially if we're working with really big numbers, you guys need to know a process to where you can still find the GCF if you can't just do it in your head. So I'm going to show you that process and basically to find the GCF of numbers what we are going to do is we are going to prime factorize. Okay, And we've already done this. This should totally be a review for you. So I'm going to go through it pretty quickly. So if I want to prime factorize 12, okay, I could do like 2 and 6, but I'm going to stick with, I'm finding the two factors that make up 12, and it's 3 and 4, okay? 3 is a prime number, so circle it. 4 is not, so break it down. What are the prime factors that make up 4? Well, 2 and 2, okay? And those are both primes, so I circle them, okay? Let's go with 28. Um, you could do set, You could do like 4 and 7, but I like to do 2 with big numbers, so I'm going to do 2 and 14. 2 is prime, so circle it. 14 is not, so break it down. So you have 2 and 7. 2 is prime, and so is 7, because you can only get multiply 1 and 7 to get to 7. Okay. So now that I have the prime factors of each one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to list them out. And again, you guys should be writing this with me. So what are the the factors, the prime factors of 12, well I had 2 times 2 times 3. And typically I know we write them using exponents, but for this we're not going to. Okay, what were all the prime factors of 28? Well we had 2 times 2 times 7. Okay, now our original problem said find the GCF, find the greatest common factor. Okay, well let's look at all of the common factors of 12 and 28. These are all common. Okay, so I want you to write the word common above these. Okay, now since they both have a 2 and a 2 in common, what we actually do with those is we multiply those. Okay, because again they both have two twos, so we have 2 times 2, which is 4. So what is the greatest common factor of 12 and 28? Well, the answer is the GCF of 12 and 28 is 4. Okay, so that would be our answer to this one. Okay. Take a second. If you have questions or parts that you don't understand, make sure you hit pause and write down any questions that you have. That way you can come to class with your questions ready. Okay, let's step up our game. So all that other stuff was to get us ready for today's objective. Okay, now we're actually going to do some problems that align to today's objective. So basically example one on today's objective is find the GCF of, okay, again, we're working with polynomials and monomials now, 12x squared y to the third and... So that's one monomial. The other one is 28 x y to the fifth power. Okay, so we have to find the greatest common factor of both. Okay, essentially to, to solve this type of problem, all we need to do is find the greatest common factor of the numbers and then find the greatest common factor of each variable. Okay, so we're going to start off by finding the greatest common factor of the numbers. Luckily, I picked numbers here, 
that we just found the GCF of, if you did not already catch that, we just found the GCF of 12 and 28. So all of our work you have up above in your notes already. Okay, so the GCF of the numbers, so let's actually write that out. So first we need to find the GCF of numbers, okay? And then we're going to find the GCF of each variable, okay? And we'll abbreviate. Okay, so the GCF of the numbers we already said was 4, okay? Now we need to find the GCF of the variables. In fact, though, let's write out essentially the work that we just had for finding the GCF of the numbers too. So let's rewrite this down here. So we have 12 x squared y to the third and then the other monomial was 28 x y to the fifth. Okay. Let's write this out in what we basically just call expanded notation. We're just going to expand this each term. So our prime factors of 12 were 2 times 2, and again, we're not going to use exponents in this case like we normally do. So 2 times 2 times 3. Now we have to worry about the variables. So how many x's did we have? Well, we had two x's. Right? How many y's did we have? Well, we had three y's. Okay. So I just took this term right here, the 12x squared y to the third, and expanded it to show basically all the prime components of that term. Okay, let's do the same thing with 28. Actually, why don't you guys take a second, hit pause, do the same thing with 28. Okay, what well, we just did with the 12x squared y to the third, do that with t this term. So hit pause now and go ahead and do that. Okay, you should have that done. Again, if you're not hitting pause and just waiting for me to do it, you're really hurting your learning, and you're not going to come to class ready to go and ready to master this quiz. Okay, so you should have had, I think it would be 2 times 2 times 7 times. We only have 1x, and I'm actually going to line up my uh, variables, and I think it'll be easier. And if you didn't do that, that's fine. In fact, I won't because you guys probably didn't do it either. So I'm just going to write it the way you guys probably have it. Okay, so we just expanded this other term. All right, now, go through and let's circle all the common factors. We already said the common factors for the numbers are 2 and 2, right? Those are in common. Obviously, 3 and 7, they don't both have them. Again, common means they both have to have them. Okay, let's look at x's. Do they have any x's in common? Okay, and you can say, yeah, they both have an x. Okay. Now, and here's, here's the trickiest part with this. Do they both, both terms, have a second x in common? And the answer is no. This one has an x, right? But this other one doesn't have any more x's, okay? Now let's move on to the y's. So we have one y in common. Do they both have two y's in common? Yeah. So again, circle those. Do they both have three y's in common? Yes, they do. Okay. Do they both have four y's in common? The answer is no. This one up here is out of y's. Okay. So if we think about the GCF of both of these, we end up with 2 times 2 times the 1x times we had 3 y's. So if we wrote out all the GCFs and kind of expanded notation, this is what it would look like. Well, we can simplify this now. Okay. So 2 times 2 is 4. There's only one x, and then how many y's are there? Well, there are three y's, so y times y times y is y to the third power, or y cubed. Okay? Guess what? You just found the GCF of these two monomials. Okay? That's the GCF. The greatest common factor of the numbers is 4. The greatest common factor going up here, the greatest common factor of each variable is, well, they both have one x and they both have three y's, okay? So that's the GCF, okay? All right, uh, let's get a key point out of this, and this is kind of a smart cut. Um, so let's, let's write it on another page because this is the key point of the whole lesson. Okay, the key point of this whole thing is, and get this down and put stars around it, okay? First, 
they they both both terms or even you could even have three terms okay so all terms must have the variable all terms must have the variable let's just keep that singular okay so that's kind of first key point now the second key point behind that is okay that what we want to do is we want to take the smallest take the smallest exponent okay we're going to take the smallest exponent okay so let's do a few examples because I, I want you to practice using this smart cut and it'll save you a lot of time. So let's do a few examples with this. Okay. So if I say find the GCF of, um, let's just do 9x squared y z and 18x cubed y to the fifth. Okay. Well, first we need to find the GCF of the numbers. Okay. And for sake of time, and we should really see this, what's the GCF of 9 and 18? Well, the answer to that, and you could do the factor trees and find out, list out all the prime factors, um, but we should see that it is, actually, go ahead and let's do that real quick. So let's do the numbers. Oops, let me erase that. Let's do the numbers. So what are all the prime factors of 9? Well, we have 3 times 3, right? What are all the prime factors of 18? Okay, well, we can break it down. We have 2 and 9, so 2 stays, and 2 threes. So we have 2 times 3 times, sorry, getting sloppy. 2 times 3 times 3. Okay, so what are what's the GCF? Well, they both have two threes, so the GCF would be nine. Okay, now let's use our smart cut for the variables. Okay, so here here are the questions that we ask ourselves: Do they both have an x? And the answer is yes. So we know that an x is going to be an answer. Okay, so first question: Do they both have an x? Yes. Next, take the smallest exponent. So this one has an exponent of two. This one has an exponent of three. So the smallest one would be 2. So, so far we have 9x squared. Okay, okay let's look next. So they both, do they both have a y? And the answer is yes. So we know y is going to be a common factor. And then take the smallest exponent. Okay, well, what's the exponent on this y? And please don't tell me 0, because if it doesn't have anything, we know that there is a hidden 1. Okay, so this one has a 1, this one has a 5. So we take the smallest one and it's going to be 1. Okay. Now we say, okay, this one has a z. Do they both have a z? And the answer is no, this one doesn't have a z. So z is not common to both terms. So in this case, our GCF would just be this, 9x squared, y to the first power. Okay. All right, I'm going to give you a few practice problems. Actually, instead of posting the practice problems on here, I think what I'll do is post a worksheet with the answers um, on the website. So before you come to class, you need to have, as part of this homework, you need to have the practice problems done with the GCFs written and the work shown. Again, before you come to class, that is part of this homework. Okay? And we'll be using this. You absolutely have to know how to do this before you go on to the next objective because this is part of the next objective.